So in this one, we're going to be using trig identities for integration, and there's three in particular that we're going to use. Now, that's how they appear on your formula sheet usually, but you're going to find it more useful to think about them in rearranged forms. Now, this one's pretty useful. Let's leave it how it is. But this one here, rearrange it so that it's sine squared a equals half 1 minus cos 2a. And this one here, rearrange it so that it's cos squared a equals all of that. What that allows us to do is if we see a sine squared a in an integration, we can replace it with that. And if we see a cos squared a in an integration, we can replace it with that. Because we don't know how to integrate sine squared, we don't know how to integrate cos squared, but we can integrate that and we can integrate that. So that's what the secret source is here. So just a little warm-up question to see how it works. If we're finding the integral of cos squared x, we'll say, oh, I can't integrate cos squared x, but maybe I would be more useful if I rewrote cos squared x as that. Now, if I do that, you can see it gets way easy to integrate. That half can come out the front of our integration, and then we're just left integrating that. So now we can just finish it off. We have one half multiplied by whatever the integral is. Now the integral of one is x and the integral of cos two x is um, one half. It's gonna be sine two x and the derivative of sine is cos, so yet positive, that's the answer. And then there's gonna be a little plus c on the end. Uh, now, probably don't wanna leave it like that. I can expand it, one half times x, so half x, Half times a half is a quarter plus one quarter sine two x plus c. Done. So don't forget why we've done it. Uh, something was a uh, uh, trig was raised to a power. We can't integrate powers, so we use a trig identity to get rid of the power, and then we can integrate. Now I just said that we don't want to integrate powers, but that's only sort of half true. We don't really know how to integrate tan squared x but we do know how to integrate sec squared x. So we can replace the tan squared x with a rearranged version of this one. Tan squared a equals sec squared a minus one, simple rearrangement. Put that into here. Now once you've done that, any good formula sheet will tell you that the integral of sec squared x is just tan x, and the integral of negative one is negative x, and don't forget your plus c on the end. So we've integrated tan squared x and it is tan x minus x plus c. So example three here, and this time we're raising cos x to the power of four. Uh, now we're gonna have to pass through uh, one of these and we're gonna have to pass through it twice, right? So if we're looking at cos four x, we can rewrite it using this identity here. Now just to make it clear, cos squared x to the power of two is the same as cos to the power of four x, right? and I'm gonna replace this cos squared x with this bit here. Now when I do that, you've gotta be a bit careful with your brackets here, it's one half times all of that, and then all squared, which means that we can square this, so one half squared is one quarter, and then we can square this, one plus cos two x. Now when we square that, we're gonna get one, we're gonna get cos two x times one times two, so 2 cos 2x, and then we're going to get cos squared 2x. Uh, and then all of that is still in that bracket being multiplied by a quarter, and we've got our respect to x. Now, because that quarter is being multiplied by all of that, I can bring it outside of the integral for safekeeping. So stop and take stock for a second. You've got an integral. You could integrate that. That would be x. You can integrate that because that's cos to the power of 1 and you know how to integrate those. What you can't integrate is that. And so what we're going to do is take that and apply this identity just to this bit here. Now you need to be careful because we've got not an a, but we've got a 2a or a 2x there, which means that you're going to get like a 4a or a 4x when you put in this identity. All right, so that's a pretty good substitution right there. We've put in our half 1 plus cos 4x because we started with a 2x there. Um, now, I probably just need to, look, we've got a term, we've got a term, and then we've got this thing here. I might just expand those brackets, so a half times 1 will be a half, and a half times cos 4x, and then we're going to be able to integrate. So looking again, we have 1 plus 2 cos 2x plus 1 half plus this. You can see we have a constant and a constant here, so we can bring them together to be uh, 3 over 2. 
And now that we have that, we can just integrate this thing, integrate this, integrate this, and integrate that. And don't forget that one quarter out the front. We're going to have to multiply everything by that one quarter. So that looks pretty good. We've got one quarter and then three terms here. Um, you can see I've integrated cos to be sine and cos to be sine. Um, probably, maybe, let's expand those brackets. But that's a good answer as it is, uh, except for the fact that I'm forgetting my plus C as always. All right, so I might just expand the brackets. All right, that's it. We got it. It's finished. It's done. Uh, we've integrated it. You can see that we had to use our um, identity twice to get through that. I'm going to do one more example here, and I'm going to do one with an extra identity. So new worked example, new trig identity. Now, it's going to be useful to think about this identity in a slightly rearranged way, just by taking that 2 and bringing it to the other side as a half. So now we can say that half sine 2a is equal to sine a cos a. So whenever you see a sine and a cos being multiplied by each other, like something like this, and the powers are just 1 and 1, you can use this identity to make it easier to integrate. So um, let's use this identity. Now, notice that our a value in this case isn't a, it's 2x, right? So our identity will be 2 times 2x. All right, so let's do that. I'm stepping through it. I'm using the identity and I'm saying 2 times 2a. All right, now, obviously, that's just 4x. And now that we've done that, integration is just really simple. It's 1 half divided by that 4. So that's 1 eighth. Um, the integral of sine is negative cos, so negative cos. And then that 4x stays there like that. And don't forget your plus c. Now there are all sorts of other trig identities that you can use. But as always with this integration stuff, it's about trying a question and working your way through it and trying to get to a place where you can see something and you can say, oh, I can integrate that. That's straightforward. That's easy and you use these trig identities to get you there.